Hello. This evening we're going to talk about upgrading our ego to perceive like Christ. It is the ego that prevents us Christians from spiritual illumination because when we eat from the tree of knowing good and bad, our mind focuses on what annoys us. We suffer in our own thoughts and judgments as Christian Pharisees tell us that we are saved while others are excluded, ignored, and disrespected in their dualistic thinking. If we cannot get rid of the aggravations, we can't put our ten attention on the present or the uni unitive consciousness of Christ. We will be, if we do, we will be able to see the world through the eyes of Christ in Christ's consciousness through the perception of our soul beyond our mind. All religions eventually lead the mature aspirants to a deep reconnection that is not an occasional spiritual experience, but a restart in the soul where we begin again and again. This restart is natural, where deep inside we are all connected as one, but in the outside our external social identity is secondary as our soul accepts and let things happen as they are bound to be. This non-dual experience in the soul allows us to be happy and calm, unaffected by the magnitude that stirs people up in the outer dimensions of life. It is like body surfing, where we want to go out to the deeper water where enormous waves are breaking, but the waves break and prevent us from getting beyond the shore and on top of the wave to surf it. The mature surfers know we dive under the wave so the force does not push us away from our goal, the deep water where we can body surf. In meditation, our thoughts dive under our distractions and attention on the surface by observing our thoughts as they come and go inside. We find ourselves proceeding deeper and deeper in our consciousness of unity. We don't stop thinking, but we awaken to the divinity within, without judgments, interpretations, or explanations, as we find ourselves just being alive, aware, and full of grace. We are not trying to change anything about ourselves because we are just observing ourselves without any filters. We can read and listen to others, but we have to experience the serenity ourselves. The ego, like the beginning surfer, does not trust diving under the waves or just observing our thoughts, because the ego mind wants to react to them, so our attention stays on the surface, struggling with thoughts and our reactions to the waves. Most people do not want to know who they are. The soul that radiates through their human being from an immaterial dimension that Jesus called heaven on earth. The Bible says, Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46.10 When we dive deep inside, beyond our critical mind, the consciousness of the soul has a chance to get through to us. Our ego mind puts up obstacles, the barriers that separate us from what is in the present moment. It is like dirt in our eyes, where the ego separates us from God with a protective filter. Therefore, we have to remove the filters in order to see the physical world, clearly from the divinity within through the perception of the soul. This is... Christ's message, which is to see through the perception of Christ's consciousness, where everything is one. We can't know God with our rational mind, with theology. We have to experience the soul because God doesn't sit on a throne, but is within us and in everything. When we find God's present presence in the physical world, we have found heaven on earth. And like Jesus, we are connected to God. Jesus came to share the, this high, his high, his experience in the soul, 
where we perceive the world with the same love and goodwill that he had. He is teaching us to go deeper beyond the mind with the compassion and acceptance to a presence in the spirit. There is nothing to fix and nothing to exclude because we just have to accept everything as it is. To serve the thoughts of our mind, we need techniques to serve the forces in good or bad situations and create a balance in ourself. When our energy is low in bad situations, we need a way to put together positive thoughts that allow the infilling of love to show us God's living presence in any setting. This is the path of enlightenment, to be enlightened just like Jesus Jesus was, where God is not an issue to be debated in the dualistic mind, but a spiritual experience for us to come into contact with in the unity consciousness of our soul. Jesus realized that there is a luminous, blissful state here on earth that is deep within us, free from our pain and sorrow, and he wanted to help us to get into and gain access to this consciousness. He did not come to establish a religion to get caught up in the wave of being Christian with rules, laws, and punishment. But for us to dive deep down beyond religious thinking to a spiritual experience. We get distracted being Christian and forget all about our soul deep within as we are bashed with our mistakes on the surface. We become too busy being a Christian and have no time to dive under the waves to reach that tranquility in the divinity within us. Matthew 5.20 in the Bible says, for I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. We need to observe life from a different angle through the perception of our soul, where we can create opportunities to go even deeper in righteousness, which is virtue. Jesus came into contact with that spiritual, harmonious state of being where everything is one in spirit. Then he said, the Father and I are one. This enables him to pass on the unity and unconditional love that comes from the spirit by being present in the here and now with God. There are no restrictions, rules, or sins in this spiritual state of unconditional love because it is a unity of grace that we call heaven on earth. Heaven is not a location on earth. It is a decision that we make in our mind to enter the soul, where we encounter heaven in the here and now, in the present moment. When we find and embrace the peace in our soul, we bring it in our consciousness to the surface and release it with love to make the world a better place, free from suffering. Why do we argue about God being real or not real? Because we can live decent lives and bring heaven to earth. We don't have to wait to die and be manipulated with heaven or hell while we live, while we live if we fail. Heaven or hell is dualistic thinking where we are manipulated. But in the unitive mind of the soul, we just have to pay attention to what is right in front of us in the present moment. The wisdom in the soul comes from everywhere beyond our rational mind. It can be nature, music, sports, philosophy, art, or comedy, if we are open to the unexplainable. The problem in the mind is when we Christians are unavailable because we occupy our mind with the Bible and have no time for friendliness or solitude. Just being silent in Christ's consciousness is a big help. We seem fixed on limiting God's actions to forms familiar to our mind and explanations and narratives that religion uses to bring people to God. But we neglect knowing ourselves 
which puts us in God. Awareness of the depths of God consciousness leads us to the soul, but they are rejected as subjective experience to favor the rules, laws, and codes of the church that are meaningless without this spiritual experience. The purpose of grace is not to just keep the commandments, but to live life fully, not afraid of weaknesses and difficulties. Depriving ourselves from the soul weakens us and strengthens our attractions to the material world. The mystic saint Thomas Aquinas said, No one can live without delight. And that is why a man deprived of spiritual joy goes over to carnal pleasures. We have seen priests and preachers who are adamant against carnal pleasures usually give in to them if they have no spiritual joy. Again, Matthew 5.20 states, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. The spiritual experience is a gift, but we need a sanctuary to receive the sacred stillness, and that is in our soul. The main thing is to step out of the mind and relax in the sacred stillness when the mind gets in our way. This is not an unnatural or weird, or weird thing, because we are resting in our soul, listening to the sacred truths. We don't ignore what is close to us, so we start with what is sacred in our lives and then expand that consciousness by observing and accepting and respecting everything around and inside us. The spiritual life is continuous, ending and beginning again, not discouraged by the ups and downs. Our sanctuary of peace is always near and we can retreat there at any time because our soul calls us to know ourself. Our soul is who we are in the adventure of life as it allows us to love freely with intimacy as we connect to the sacred stillness in everything. The calm and bliss we experience within gives us the confidence to let go of the hell we, we, we create in our mind. Christian preaching can keep that hell alive, but hell has no place in the spiritual paradigm of heaven and earth, on earth. Hell imprisons us in the mind with fear, and it is an obstacle to the love, peace, and compassion of our soul. Our existence needs love. We don't need the power of hell that preachers love to talk about. Inner peace, love, and sacred stillness are the blessings that pay tribute to the soul. This spiritual awareness is not condemning who we, who we or others are, but it is accepting everyone as a part of God. Our soul loves and uplifts us when we are damaged and broken and stays with us throughout the day to spread that joy to others. Jesus said in Luke 17.21, Neither shall they say, Lo here, lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God, which is your soul, knows the way, so run in that direction with love and dive deep within. In this way, we get rid of the dust in our eye and are able to see through the clear perception of Christ's consciousness. We look at the world differently, enjoying all things as they are in God together with us. Living in Christ's consciousness is living in grace, safe and sound, one with God. It allows us to feel things more with our five senses and to develop a sixth sense people call intuition, where we intuit things before they happen, as past, present, and future are all happening in the present now. The sixth sense in the soul dimension is in harmony with the oneness of God. Albert Einstein said, The intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. 
we have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Thank you.